Hey, thanks again for watching Weekly Word. Appreciate you tuning in each week, and I hope you'll share this with somebody, a friend, somebody needs a word of encouragement, a spiritual word to start their week. Last week, we started talking about a man by the name of Nathaniel uh, from the Gospel of John, John chapter one. And he's the last of the disciples being called in that chapter. He, his friend named Philip uh, had met Jesus already, and he goes up to Nathaniel, who's camped out underneath a fig tree, and says, Nathaniel, you gotta come with me. You gotta meet this guy. I have met the Messiah, the one that we've been reading about in the scripture, the one that we have grown up longing for. I have met him, and his name, are you ready? Jesus of Nazareth. And when Nathaniel hears that, I, I guess he laughed and said, come on, Philip. There is no way. There's no way that the Messiah, the son of the living God, is the son of Joseph and he's from Nazareth? Nowhere land? That's impossible. Finally, Philip convinces Nathaniel to get up and come. Nathaniel is going with low expectations because this Messiah is not the one he's expecting. This is not the Messiah that he thinks is going to be the savior of the world that he's read about in the prophet Isaiah. But as he's walking up to meet Jesus, Jesus sees him and he says out loud, there is a true Israelite, one with no guile, G-U-I-L-E. Hey, that may be a good five-letter word for your wordle game tonight, but the point being is guile is a word that we don't often use. I doubt you've used it this week at all. But what it means or what the picture that it paints is would be like a fisherman who has some bait on the end of his hook, and that bait is to deceive, to tempt, to pull away and attract a fish. What Jesus was saying is, Nathaniel was a true Israelite. True on not just the outside by following the law, but true on the inside. It's like what Paul says in Romans 2, uh, 29, when he talks about how, what it means to be true to God. It's not just outward, it's inward. And he's a man of no guile, no self-deception. He's real. He's authentic, he's true, he's faithful to his God. And when Nathaniel hears that, it must have knocked him back on his heels. And he looks at Jesus and he says, do I know you? Have I ever met you before? How in the world would you know that about me? I find it interesting that Nathaniel doesn't deny that because Nathaniel knows the character of his life. He knows the integrity of his own heart, but he's curious, how did you know that, Jesus? And Jesus said, because I saw you. I saw you before Philip even brought you. I saw you while you were sitting over there under the fig tree. You know, we all see things, but Jesus had the ability not just to see, but he also had the ability to perceive what it is that's in our hearts and in our lives. And that same Jesus has the ability to see you and to see me today in our needs, in our hurts, in our longings, in our purity of our lives, and in the filth of our lives and the sin of our lives. He has the ability to see it. He sees it and he perceives it. And when Nathaniel recognizes that this one had the ability to see and perceive and even know the inner workings of his heart, he says out loud, you are the Messiah. What a wonderful savior we have. Live today knowing that he sees you, that he knows you, and that he knows not just what we show on the outside, but he knows the matters of my heart and of your heart. May God bless you, and we'll see you next week.
Hey, welcome to Weekly Word. Thanks for uh, watching again here. We appreciate so much uh, each week you tuning in. Hope you'll share this with somebody maybe that you know that uh, just needs a word of encouragement and inspiration maybe uh, as they begin their week. Uh, in John chapter one, in the Gospel of John chapter one, uh, there is a story about the calling of a man uh, to be one of the followers, one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus. He's the last one mentioned. Uh, his name is Nathaniel. And what's interesting about Nathaniel is not just what, how Nathaniel comes to be a follower of Christ, but, but what's interesting is what Christ actually, actually says to him and how the words that Christ speaks to him. Uh, Nathaniel had a friend of his by the name of uh, Philip. And Philip has encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, and it has uh, been so noticeable to Philip that Philip is absolutely convinced that this man named Jesus of Nazareth, the little village not far from where they are, uh, is actually the Messiah, the one that they had read about in scriptures. And so he goes over to his friend, uh, Nathaniel. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about Nathaniel. Uh, in fact, Nathaniel's only mentioned in John 1 and then over in John 20, uh, where it's talked about how he's there with Peter after the resurrection, and he's one of the party that went fishing uh, with Peter when they encountered then Jesus on the shoreline. And so we don't know a lot about him. Uh, we think sometimes that uh, his name is also, uh, that actually his name is used in scripture under the name of Bartholomew as well, because Bartholomew would be a name that would mean the son of. And uh, so we think that that sometimes is Nathaniel, uh, but he went by Bartholomew also. We don't really know, and it doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that Nathaniel is sitting under a fig tree and Philip comes to him and says, Nathaniel, you're not gonna believe the news. I have encountered the one who is the Messiah. And he tells Nathaniel, you know, you know, Nathaniel, we've been reading about this. We have heard about this all of our life. In fact, even in the scripture, it says, we read about him in the prophets, we read about him in the words of Moses, and I have met the Messiah, and his name is Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. And what's so fascinating is the response of Nathaniel. Nathaniel says to Philip, come on, man, how in the world would, why in the world would you think the Messiah would come from Nazareth? Because we know that Nazareth was nothing more than a little bitty village. It was nowhere land. In fact, we also know that that's where Nathaniel was from. He was from a little nowhere place named Canaan where Jesus would perform his first miracle by changing the water into wine. And Nathaniel said, nothing good has ever come out of Nazareth. There's no way this guy is the Messiah. You know what I think is interesting about that, so important to note is, is that Nathaniel is often like we are. He's, Jesus was not the one that met the, his level of expectations, at least not yet. He thought somebody who was going to be a Messiah had to come from someplace very prominent. Someone who's gonna be a Messiah, as many people also thought, would have to be someone who would be a mighty ruler, a mighty leader, someone who would have some kind of military backing or military training, someone that would be able to right all the wrongs of the Roman government to them and set them free. But that's not what Jesus was. Jesus was and is the Messiah. But he wasn't the Messiah that Nathaniel expected, and he wasn't the Messiah that many others expect. You know, the scripture often says, in fact, Jesus said in John chapter six, uh, you have seen what I have done, but yet you still don't believe. In John chapter 11, when he brings Lazarus out of the grave, he says, as he prays to the Father, Father, I know that you hear me because you always hear me. And it's interesting that he adds this. The only reason I'm saying this, Father, is so the people around me will hear it and know that you're the one I have come to fulfill your purpose, your desire to give my life for man. Jesus is the Messiah, but Jesus is also the Messiah that you and I desperately need. He's the Messiah 
that changes our lives. He's the Messiah that forgives our sin. He is the one that gives us life. Nathaniel's gonna discover, we'll talk about this next week. He is going to discover that Jesus is everything that he is looking for. Remember this week, Jesus is everything you're looking for, and he's everything in our lives. Have a great week, we'll see you next week.